You are listening to Something Rather Than Nothing. Creator and host, Ken Vellante. Editor and producer, Peter Bauer. This is Ken Vellante with the Something Rather Than Nothing podcast, and I am so pleased to have Susan Carr, artist, a painter, uh, Station. I'm stationed here in Oregon. I'm reaching Susan from uh, the Cape. Uh, it is a great pleasure. Susan, welcome to Something Rather Than Nothing podcast. Hi, Ken. Nice to see you. Yeah, I um, I maybe like some others, uh, and I'll just I'll just drop it right here. I saw your paintings on Instagram, and um. They were so beautiful and unique to me, and and, and colorful, and 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 the texture. I was brought right in, and I I was brought in to them, and I was like, I just I wanted to know more. And um, part of that, it's been nice to discover your art uh, for me and, and, and encounter it. But I wanted to ask you, Susan, um, when did you see yourself as an artist? What, what what's what's that part of your story as far as when you get to the point you're like? This is what I do. This is this is who I am. How did that happen? I uh, always saw myself as an artist. Since I was five, I would I saw myself as an artist. Um, I always knew I was going to be an artist. I always um, wanted to be an artist. I had my first show at the Falmouth Artist Guild, um, and I really want to read remake the painting I, I made then it was girl watching ants. So it was, um, I remember it, it was in a show. I was so excited and I knew then that I wanted to be an artist, but I thought maybe I might be a, um, illustrator at the time. Um, as I got a little bit older, uh, in school, um, it wasn't until high school that I decided that I, I just wanted to be an artist. I went to um, be a um, an art therapy person oh. um, for a while, um, and uh, I was in a, a a program for that. And through the museum school, it didn't work out. I had children, and I could not take the later classes. So it ended up that I had to do fifth year at school. I had to do it, but. Um, I chose to to participate in fifth year, and which led me to uh, a master's program. Um, so and and now I'm here. So it it all worked out really, but um, I I kind of uh, I've lived my life basically without a net. There has been there's been like no. Um, no like teaching or anything it's all been uh just creating art that's what i do yeah and 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 thank you for that and um i don't know something you mentioned about those words you know that if you, your experience and how you how you do your art and um thanks for thanks for uh mentioning that too um because i talked to a lot of different artists and there's different way i talked to artists who maybe don't see themselves as an artist, like it doesn't happen a lot, but there's that dynamic of, you know, uh, and, and so I, I find that, I find that fascinating. I wanted to ask you a question, um, about the paintings themselves. Of course, I, I haven't seen them physically yet. I'll, I'll make it out that way and, and see them, but, um, in their description and visually how they appear, um, bright, vibrant paintings with much, texture and it's a kind of a strange question to ask but uh can you describe a bit of that what i'm seeing with regards to the texture and how the painting is i think i want my eyes to be able to taste and feel the paint so um my eyes get hungry i want I'm always wanting, um, I always want to, 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 to feel the paint with my eyes. And that's why I also do ceramics because I like to, I like to do clay so I can feel, feel the clay. 
Um, and they're kind of they're kind of the two sides of the same coin. Um, I've always been a very thick painter. Um, I was an abstract thick painter for a long time. Um, it's hard for me. It would be very difficult for me to do a thin painting, but I, I do do, um, my eyes are a lot of my eye paintings on paper are enamel, um, on rag and they're very thin and they're very clean. So I do do it. Um, but my, uh, my, uh, those, those brightly colored, um, thick paintings are, um, something else. I have, I do many different things because I like to keep myself very busy. Like I, I like to change it up all the time for myself to keep myself, um, curious and involved with the art. Oh, I, uh, I'm really connected to what you're saying, particularly that, uh, uh, curious, you know, I find that, um, you know, I have a deep curiosity, but even right now, Susan, I'm taking my first art class ever. Great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's online. So nice. Yeah. It's online. It's two months. It's, uh, with the guest I've had on the show, Susie DeVille has been very inspiring, uh, to me, but I got to tell you, um, you know, I started painting just a few years ago and having this experience where we're going, there's not a lot of time spent. This this is to get you moving, get you doing, give you the structure to do the things. And it's not for a million questions. It's to get in there and do it. And we're going into different forms. And um, one of the things that I've, I, I've discovered um, is that we, I made a collage and I never made a collage, or at least not since I remember wow. when I was a kid. But um, one of the difficulties I've had in my painting is that I don't know where it's, where it's going or exactly why I'm, what I'm trying to create. And when I was able to work with collage, I was able to take pieces of uh, painting that I had created in my style and really for the first time ever to form it into like my intention more than how it comes wow. out. And it was just transformative because I was like, oh, this is what a, a painter who's going in towards that is able to achieve when the paint or maybe able to achieve when the painting's done. And I was like, well, maybe that feeling or me doing that is just a different method of how I create it. And I was like, all in one day, Monday morning. And I, I wow. got all, yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. It was Sometimes really... I don't know, like I did a painting last week and I didn't know what it was going to be. I, and um, it ended up being something totally different. So um, there's paintings that I have a, a clear idea about. And then there's paintings that I have no idea what it's going to be. And I just start painting. And, yeah. um, and that's a surprise. And then I, then I kind of get in there when I, when I kind of know what it's about after I've painted it, then I can finish it. But, um, yeah, a lot of times I don't, I don't know what it, what the painting is asking from me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I love that, uh, type. I love that type of discussion. Um, yeah, thank you. I, uh, it's, it's, it, it the part that I just mentioned is, is still, um, you know, pretty new to me. So, um, that's the, uh, that's the phase, that's the phase I'm in. I want to, before going exciting. to another, <laughs> yeah, it is exciting. It is mm -hmm. exciting. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to add, I want to go back to a point and it's a curious little point because it was about the sensory piece with your connection to the painting and the feel and the tactile. It's not always, I've had this discussion before, but um, I, I found that I, uh, let me tell you what pops has popped into my head before. And I don't know if I say it out loud. It's like, there's some paintings, particularly with texture. It's like, I legitimately want to take a bite. Now I won't because that, that, that thwarts <laughs> everything, but that sentiment, that, that tactile feeling is, it must be powerful in some, some folks and um just that connection to uh the feel of it you want to touch you want to feel it and so it do do you find that that drive ends up kind of maybe melding 
uh, painting uh, sculpture and form for you to to feel it and see it that way? I feel that the sculptures that I make are also paintings. So it's all, um, I, I don't know why I, I, I've always been attracted to thick painting. It's always been something that I've wanted that I, that I enjoy doing. Um, I just love paint, I think. Yeah. And I love, and I love color and I love to see more and, um, yeah. I I just I love what paint does. I love how it um there's certain paint that I use that I like to use other than other paint and um I like I, I, I'm I'm getting addicted to Holbein, which is really bad. <laughs> That's a bad addiction. <laughs> um yeah, I I don't know. I think it's just a uh just something that I, I'm, I, I'm, attra- I myself is attracted to. Not everybody's attracted to it. Some people really like thin work. Some people really enjoy something else. And it's just a, a matter of personal taste, I think. Yeah. I, I well, think. Yeah. Well, thanks for the, the thick stuff, uh, Susan. We're talking with Susan, Susan Carr. And um, uh, just, uh, uh, I would say, I would say just like, uh, uh, it's a you're just a painter that's super exciting for me uh, to see your Thank stuff you. in the color in the, in the color man i just you know it's uh i've talked to folks about this this whole month it's in the pacific north i'm in the pacific northwest it's january um i run out like a a, a cat and the, the sun pops out in a small like little ray and just run out there so color sun like bright um i've I've, I've just dropped rain into it deliberately. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's been fun. I've been trying to share it with, uh, with my art. Okay. Susan, I have to ask you one of the big questions, um, because art's so important to you and, you know, such a big part of your life, but what is art? What, what, what do you, what do you think art is for you? Oh, art is, um, living every day. Art is uh, being able to, uh, you know, just have, it's a, it's a state of mind. Art is a state of mind and whatever I create, you know, it's a way of be, it's, it's, it's being able to create, you know, it's being open um, and I think grateful. I I have a a lot of ideas about art. when I was younger, art had to be certain things, you know, if, if I didn't have my paint or if I didn't have like, um, enough money to buy paint, then there was no art. Yeah. But I had to learn as a, as a young person and as a young woman that that was bullshit. Yeah. That, art, that art's a state of mind. I can make art out of anything. And actually I I'm, I've got to go get some bricks cause I'm going to make a tower for a space out of bricks. Um, and I'm going to use house paint and that's going to be art. Art can be anything. Art is how we, um, show up in, uh, in life. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> thank you for that answer. <laughs> uh, wow with art does does it have a particular role what's 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 the role and and i ask this question just in general um sometimes people feel it's changed or it's more important or recent times said uh, we need art more than we have what what's its role for us given i think we've always needed art i think since we since we've been painting on caves i mean that we've been needing art art is necessary art is a it is necessary for culture. It's necessary for communication. It's necessary for us to feel um, at home. It's necessary for so many, for us to be able to communicate with one another. Um, 
whatever way you make it, whether it's music, it's painting, it's dancing, it's poetry, uh, it's making a cup of tea, whether it's uh, meditation, whether it's just being there for somebody, um, art is, see, I have a, I, I think art is everything. So art is important in every way. Yeah. Art is, I, I, I think art is all about love. So, you know, if, if we're loving, then if we're, if we're trying to be more loving, more compassionate, then we're really being artful. In our I, day -to -day. Uh, I, I love that. I love that you said that, um, the word, the, the word love, because I think when we introduce it, it's always kind of sticks in there a bit. I'll give you an example say it with art too, right? That, that there's that love, but I, uh, my, my day jobs is a, as a union rep and I use the term, uh, which might seem odd. You know, I'm tough, maybe tough union guy. Um, but if what we're doing with one another is concerned for workers, or whatever is not about love or something, bigger and concern and solidarity, then we got to be doing something else. So like yeah. the centrality of, of that. And I tell you what, what was interesting, Susan. So I, I, so I've tried to introduce more art to help organize folks uh, in labor and I'm just, just doing more of it, but we're doing these word associations and we're looking at all these words and you think of a stereotypical thing about the union, whatever stereotypes are out there. And then I'm working with my members and we're going into bargain and, and you know, pays in there and this and that mm -hmm. big words on the word cloud, love, community, the children, right. excellence, pride. Right. And I'm like, look, folks, I didn't ask for these answers. This is what we're about here. And when you have the word love in there as as well and i think we shy away from it a lot because it maybe it implies too much with with art or what we do but i say just like you do you stick it in there conspicuously or people do it let's talk about that let's talk about why we bother <laughs> right yeah. um i really connected with what you had to say there and and by saying it out loud too you know yeah i i'm i'm i've i've lost too much in my life not to not to be able to just say how I really feel and what my art is about and what I try to like my eye paintings are, you know, all about, you know, love and uh, communication and all of my paintings are, I try to bring joy to people. I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not talking, uh, you know, um, any art jar jargon or art talk. My I'm very down to earth. I I'm very, here and now, I just want to. I just want people to be happy. I I want to bring joy. I want to bring love. I want to bring happiness to the people that see the work, and um, and that's my mission. If I can do that um, in a impeccable way, then I've done a good job in my lifetime. I want to be a lieutenant in your army. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, interviewed the one of my favorite painters, uh, Vanessa Stockard, um, and she's in uh, Australia. And um, uh, she used the, the phrase "happiness peddler." She, she, yeah, that's what, that, that that you know, like in a sense of let's move this along. And uh, those dynamics are are, are just wonderful. Um, that energy is is wonderful because I think maybe. And us talking, you know, like when you mentioned like live in life, you know, you know how things can go. And but also uh, with with art of saying, like, look, this is what we strive for. It's almost like um, I'm sorry, this may be a tangent, but the Dead Poet Society speech that Robin William gives, you know, like th the things that we're living for is the poetry, is the love, is, right. is the art. We do these other things and we get our degrees and we do that. But why are we living? It's right. this. So I love I, I love that um, energy. 
I got a different question for you, Susan. Um, it's actually a, a curiosity about because you work, uh, you work. I one thing I, I like about your work is it it feels unto itself and in and, and unique. So, but that brings the question to my head. Um, as far as I do have a curiosity, which sometimes is asked about what what artists um, what artists you you enjoy, or maybe that invoke for you that same type of you know curiosity, love, and energy. Um, what are those? Um, I you know of course I love Gustin. Um, I love who do I love? I love Alice Mackler. I, I mean I love. Uh, Allison Shulnick. I love, um, I love so many people on Instagram. Yeah. I love so many people on Instagram. Um, I just, I just have, uh, I have a Pinterest mood board where I have like everybody that I, I look at. I look at a lot of work. I look at a lot of work and sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's really bad. I got to really not because it's hot. You, as an artist, you have to really focus on who you are and not look at other people's work because it's easy to fall into a trap. So I look at when I go to uh, the Met or the Whitney, I, I mean, that's when I really am able to like Susan Rothenberg. I was looking at I was enjoying yeah. I was enjoying her work just recently and I hadn't really liked her work before. But there was something about her recently that I, I got that I really liked it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and, and thanks for that. I, um, uh, we might have a mutual connection with Rebecca Mills, who is a recent guest oh, yeah. on, mm -hmm. the sh on the show. And, um, uh, the, in, in some of the, I, I do see some of the stuff as like arts organizing that I do, or maybe the synchronicities and the connections, but a, what a wonderful conversation with, uh, Rebecca and in, in gorgeous art. And then seeing yours, there's a, there's just a nice, uh, a, a nice, she's a wonderful here. person. She's a great curator. She's a great artist. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 great to great to have seen that and 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 have that uh, have that connection. I do want you know I think both both of us can be rather uh, down to earth, but I do have an esoteric question that is tied to the to the show, which I always throw out there uh, for folks, which is the show's title is about maybe about the big meaning or big meaning for you, or maybe not. Why is there something rather than nothing? Uh, I answered this question um, in an email. Why is there something rather than nothing? Because we are creative beings. We have to, we are born to create, I think. I think we, since we were, you know, Neanderthals, we were born to create. We were painting on cave walls. We needed to have images and we needed to talk about and communicate how we felt about the world around us and our you know our me our thoughts about god that's why there's always going to be something rather than nothing because we are animals that communicate <laughs> yeah. and that need images to reflect back at us what we believe and what we see and what we want to see and what our dreams are. I think I could well, go into it for a long time, but uh, you know. no, I, I th thank you. Thank you so much, Susan. And uh, um, we were chatting a little bit before uh, we got on there too. It's uh, it's, it, I just wanted to say also it's uh, it is, uh, it is exciting for me out here uh, in the, uh, Willamette Valley uh, in Oregon to uh, be able to connect with you out in uh, Cape Cod, a place it that is I do. exciting for me too. Good. I, I, and I, that's, that's part of, that's part of this show. I think we overlook such things. So I'm, uh, we definitely share that because it's, it's something I was born in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. You know what I wow. mean? Yeah. So, you know, you know, the area. So, uh, you know, Pawtucket is, you know, this is, is a particular place. I adore Pawtucket. It's very much mm -hmm. part of me. But you know, I'm out here in the woods in Oregon, which is uh, 
report from out here. Adore it. Strange lands out this way. Really? <laughs> very different. Very, 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 uh, very different, but very, uh, very wonderful. So I, um, at first I didn't realize you were on the, on the Cape and then um, I was looking at your stuff and maybe it was location and reading the bio. So I was like, Oh yes, the Cape. I love being on the Cape. I want to <laughs> see the, the ocean of Oregon. Oregon has a, has a, has a seaside, doesn't it? Well, or I got to tell you, Oregon, I got to tell you, and I can tell you from the perspective that you would know out there for, for the Atlantic. So I'm, I'm, I'm the person who's gone out here and, and, and can report back. So, the shocking aspects of the Pacific Ocean from somebody who uh, lived on, you know, Atlantic Ocean down in Narragansett. Lived right. On, I've been, I've been all, over, all, all on the ocean. Out here, this uh, monstrous giant, uh, the Pacific Ocean, is very cold, extremely powerful, and at times unpredictable. Uh, wow. in, its, in its power and sneaker waves and things like that. So first of all, I learned and was told much respect. And the saying out here is you don't even turn your back to the ocean, which leads to some behaviors that I try to adopt where I keep my eye on the ocean. So it's, it's something to be respected. What's also different is you could see some of the photos where it seems like in some spots you have – the wonderful trees of Oregon and then you have a cliff and then it's just ocean. So it yeah. feels rugged because it just yeah. land decided to end right here. And then there's the great, great ocean. So it has a, and Maine has some of that rugged component because, right. you know, right. uh, for sure. So it's, it's, it's powerful. It's cold. Uh, it's to be respected. It is beautiful. One thing too is the tide pools out here are completely different than anything I would have experienced over there where all these fantastic creatures in some spots connect in the tide pools and you can like see things you've never wow. seen before. So it's, uh, it's very, it's, it's wonderful how different it is. Um, and um, it's just something to behold and to know. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. Sounds like a wonderful place. It sounds like a very interesting place to be living. It is. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it's. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot uh, of of the earth. And uh, and um, the one thing finally on this is because growing up on the East Coast, up in New England, you know, you can swim in the water for I don't know how long. I don't October. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Out here. Um. You have if there's a magical current that is coming in from somewhere else and is much warmer than all the currents, and you are there that day, it's a joy and a wonder. But it's not pl it's not planable. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> to swim, so you, don't, and, you don't swim a lot. You don't get to swim too much. Uh, you you know? got to go down to you got to go down to L.A. for that. So far oh, away, man. But, yeah, yeah. So, but um. It's um it's a great atmosphere to be around and um and of course, you know, connecting on the ocean and talking about the Cape and in and, and the coast here. I, I do think that's part of the energy and you know, you excited to connect out here. I'm excited to talk to you. Heck, you're in the Cape. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it's 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 fun that way. Um Susan, I, I wanna make sure that the listeners know, you know, where to find find your stuff. Talk about how they can or you'd like them to encounter your Oh, I can you work. can find me on Instagram at Susan at Susan Carr eighty eight. I don't have a website. So oh, there is plenty of wonder and joy uh on your Instagram. So Thank folks, you. there 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 is an easy easy answer there. Um I wanted to thank you so much, Susan, for, for taking the time and connecting with the show. Um, thank you for I, having me. It was really fun. I, I, that's what I always uh, try to promise. I try to have it be that way. And um, maybe with some of our uh, connections and some of the background out there in, in New England, it, it is, it does, it is a special conversation for me. And uh, I do appreciate you because uh 
being able to connect with the level of curiosity and fun uh, you look in for your art and you're not afraid to talk to is a quality we might share because I think sometimes celebrating that, talking about it, yelling it out, pointing that yeah, stuff is definitely. <laughs> what we definitely. should be doing. Um, so from Oregon to uh, Cape Cod, uh, Susan, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you. Show. Yeah. I guess I guess we'll see you on the flip side. Yeah, I'll make it over there, and uh, I'll, I'll get to. I won't bite any of your paintings, but I'll look at them very closely. That would be nice. I'll be, I'll, I'll be. You always have a. You always can come over anytime. Right. Anytime. <laughs> that's, that, that's that type of New England, New England friendliness, which we know about. <laughs> it doesn't always seem anytime. friendly. <laughs> Thanks, Susan, and you take care. This is something rather than nothing.